The earliest home of life on Earth was probably in the warm shallows of the ocean. The marine ecologist observes life there in order to learn about its interrelationships. And learning learns, perhaps most importantly, how better to observe. Even so familiar a creature as a crab can reveal to the attentive observer much of the drama of survival beneath the sea. Every day, the creatures of the sea must fight for their existence. Alert and aggressive, they spend their lives defending a territory, searching for food, and surviving amongst the predators. In no other place on Earth but on the coral reef do the hunted and hunter live so close together, yet every species has its own way of protecting itself. a hiding place for the reef creatures. It is a walled city in the sea, a safe retreat from the marauders of the open ocean and all but the largest storms. inhabitants are constantly on the alert. The smaller fish stay close to the reef. If there is danger, they move even closer to the reef or into it. The hungry jewfish watches the stone crab and so does the stingray. If the crab should attack a coral shrimp, or if the crab itself should be attacked by the ray or the jewfish, the whole area of the reef might explode into action, the excitement spreading from one group of animals to another. Meanwhile, however, the reef is tranquil, but always each citizen watches the other for the opportunity to feed. The reef creatures' methods of attack and defense are distinctive structures of their lives, just as their shells or fins are structures of their bodies. Mm -hmm. 
turtles and seashells defend themselves by utilizing various forms of armor plate. The hermit crab is born without armor, but inherits from its neighbors when they've expired. The family Crustacea, which includes lobsters and crabs, have exoskeletons instead of skeletons. This is a rigid exterior covering, which is shed periodically to allow for growth. During this time, the animal hides until the new shell has hardened. Some creatures are particularly difficult to swallow. The porcupine fish is not only covered with sharp spines, but it can also inflate itself with water when threatened. Underneath its skin, the cowfish has a bony protective layer that safeguards it against attack. Its relative, the trunkfish, shares its shell-like outer covering. And as an added defense, when excited, it can release a toxic substance into the water. The stingray has a poisonous spike-like spine at the base of its tail. Its position enables the ray to defend itself from an enemy attacking from above, such as the shark. The jellyfish and the anemone have stinging cells that are equally useful for protecting themselves from being eaten and for catching other creatures to eat. The sea urchins protect themselves with sharp needles, which in some varieties are poisonous. With venomous spines amongst its fins, the scorpion fish is soundly defended. A camouflaged disguise enables this fish to catch its victim undetected. The blue crab has the equipment and technique for effective self-protection. But in an open area, these advantages are diminished. Aggression is very much a part of defensive instincts of the damselfish. Their territories and borders, though invisible, are vigorously protected. They fight for ownership of a safe shelter amongst the coral. 
or for promotion within their own hierarchy. Such aggression is also used to protect a nest from egg-eating predators. Many inhabitants of the reef seek protection by means of their appearance. Those that are camouflaged and thus difficult to detect against their backgrounds include flounders, tiger groupers, yellow rays, lizard fish, and juvenile porcupine fish. Disruptive color patterns are a means of protection for the spotted drum and the blue-headed rats. The patterns confuse potential predators as to the actual size and shape of the prey. This optical illusion is used successfully by many types of reef fish. Creatures that are dark on top and light underneath are said to be countershaded, with bellies to match the bright sky and dark backs to blend with the depths. The young green turtle shares this coloration with the free-swimming ocean fish. Perhaps this might help explain why green turtle hatchlings have rarely been seen until the end of their first year of life. The false eye spots of the four-eyed butterfly fish may mislead predators as to the location of the vital areas of the fish. Other juvenile species have the same defensive coloring. A few highly developed creatures are able to change color for protection or to signal anger. This can be done by means of muscular contractions or nervous control of specialized pigmented cells. The file fish the octopus, and the squid are practitioners of this art. The squid uses a dazzling combination of defense mechanisms, jetting water to get away fast leaving ink as a false target and changing color as disguise. The octopus and the moray eel are enemies and compete for the caves they live in. When attacked by a moray eel, the octopus may emit a cloud of ink 
in order to dull the sense of smell of the eel and to give it a false target to strike at. The eel will attempt to hold the octopus with its long teeth. If it fails to do this, the octopus can wrap its tentacles around the head of the eel, holding the eel's mouth shut. But the eel can escape this by tying itself in a knot and slipping through the knot and away. If an animal seems to be losing a fight, it withdraws if it can. For many creatures, hiding is a lifelong activity. The tactic of clothing themselves with whatever is handy is employed by the decorator crab and the sea urchin. The school befuddles the predator's aim by presenting a confusing target. fails, fleeing is the next best defense. There is a balance in the sea, the balance of nature, the balance between attack and defense. If the predator becomes too successful, he eliminates his food source and thus guarantees his own extinction. The defensive abilities of the prey usually prevent this from happening. However, it is also the predator who keeps a healthy, balanced sea by first attacking the weak and the injured.
The inhabitants of the reef usually kill only to eat. There is little wanton cruelty in that world, and no waste. Food that is missed by the predator is eaten by the scavenger. The last way in which an individual creature contributes to the balance of the sea is himself eventually to be eaten. observer, it is an existence of violence that marks the lives of these sea creatures. But what seems so remarkable is that in the midst of this violence, there exists such beauty. Some fish have bad reputations which they do not deserve. The manta ray looks quite fearsome, but it is not aggressive. The horn-like projections on its head are thought to help funnel water into its mouth. These giant rays feed on microscopic plankton. It is by watching fish in their own environment, here in the shallows and on the deeper reefs, that a diving scientist can best study their behavior. the creatures of the sea instinctively feed and defend themselves, hunting and being hunted. It is how they survive. Whoa. 